Good evening. I'm Joe Pinion in for Eric Bowling tonight. Well, the time has come for the world to acknowledge a brutal truth that the United Nations has become a morally bankrupt institution devoid of the ethical standing necessary to help secure the world. Now, on December 29th, 1942, nearly 82 years ago to the day, Franklin Delano Roosevelt and UK Prime Minister Winston Churchill drafted what became known as the Declaration of the United Nations. In the fog of World War II, they made a clear-eyed assertion that complete victory over the enemies is essential to defend life, liberty, independence, and religious freedom, and to preserve human rights and justice in their own lands as well as in other lands, and that they are now engaged in a common struggle against savage and brutal forces seeking to subjugate the world. That was the clarity of vision guiding America and the United Nations 82 years ago. Two great men leading two great nations, forging a broader, more permanent coalition to save the free world. Well, fast forward to present, and like that old tree rotting by the river, the institution has become a hollow husk, blinding the world to the reality that the body inside is dead. It has been 81 days since the cowardly, barbaric attack on innocent civilians in Gaza by the terrorist organization Hamas, and the UN, the self-purported conscience of the free world has not found the time to condemn Hamas one time or the decency to officially demand the release of every single hostage. If you were writing a definition for the terrorist organization Hamas from scratch, the phrase savage and brutal forces seeking to subjugate the world would probably be a great place to start. That is the mandate of the UN set forth at its founding in 1942 to confront the savage and brutal forces of the world, to preserve religious freedom for the betterment of humanity, to secure justice in our own lands and in others. Instead, this UN calls for a ceasefire, as if Hamas is some aggrieved community organization akin to the NAACP here at home. They call for a two-state solution, as if you can sign an agreement for cohabitation with individuals that do not believe in your right to exist. And they say nothing about Hamas in the wake of the killing and raping and butchering of innocent men and women and children. People who proudly proclaim they will release no more hostages until there is a full cessation of aggression. That is not the stance of a coalition for freedom and justice around the world. That is actually a portrait of moral midgetry on full display for the world, funded with billions of dollars of your tax dollars to the tune of nearly 27% of the UN's budget. You see, in the presence of such value-neutral betrayal, the time has come for us to seriously consider asking for our money back. Now, in 2008, at the United Nations Security Council on Women examining the hidden horrors of war and peace, former U.S. Secretary of these United States, Condoleezza Rice, stated, We affirm that sexual violence profoundly affects not only the health and safety of women, but also the economic and social stability of their nations. It was a powerful moment for the United Nations. In the shadow of a 1994 genocide in Rwanda, where nearly a half a million women and children were raped or sexually mutilated, while much of the world put their head in the sand and pretended nothing was happening. It was supposed to be a reset, a new clarion call to set the record straight that the United Nations and the world would not stay silent while rape was weaponized as a tool of war. And yet here we are once again in 2023 with the UN Women's Council waiting 55 days to condemn the raping of innocent women and children in Gaza. Images of knives shoved into the private parts of dead women after being brutalized again and again. Images seen only by the world press because they are too graphic and detestable to share with the world at large. Hamas, Iran, the Taliban, the forces of evil in that region, they do not want a two-state solution. They want a final solution. They want the end of the Jewish state of Israel. You cannot sit for peace talks at a table with individuals who traffic in terror and view your existence 
as a simple inconvenience. This is a battle that those who love freedom and oppose evil cannot afford to lose. But it is impossible to achieve the freedom that we seek when the organization founded to end World War II as a firewall to preventing World War III refuses to condemn the very savage and brutal forces they were founded to help rid the world of forever.